Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, I wanted to come on here and talk about all this controversy that's going on with poor baby Blue Ivy, okay? So if you guys do not know, Meg Thee Stallion, she decided to take to Instagram on New Year's and basically post a picture with her, Beyonce, and Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy's adorable. She's getting so much older now. And in the picture, we see that Beyonce pressed her hair, and she just looks really cute. She's missing some teeth. You can tell she's, like, definitely growing up. And so, of course... You know, you, you expect the trolls to come out, but when you see people who have check marks by their names, people who own magazines and who write for magazines trying to throw shots at this little girl, I think it's really sickening. So if you guys do not know, um, the Black Vanity Fair editor, him and then a white editor from Harper's decided to go in on Blue Ivy's looks. That rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, especially Mickey Kendall. Mickey Kendall was very upset and she blasted them. So this is exactly what happened. Um, Kay Austin Collins, who works for Vanity Fair, he says, I have a feeling that Jay-Z's face jeans are about to really hit Blue Ivy and I feel so sorry for her. So then um, the white editor from Harper's decided to chime in and she says, or she'll just get plastic surgery at 16 a la Kylie Jenner and we'll all have to pretend that she's always looked that way. I can't allow myself to feel too sorry for the incredibly rich. So then that's when uh, Mickey Kendall decided to chime in and she says, there's nothing... There's nothing harmless about insulting a child's features, regardless of whether the child has famous parents or not. There's no value in colorism, anti-blackness, or attempting to pretend that class is a justification for targeting a seven-year-old with insult. But let's get really granular for a second. If these people are willing to be this disgusting about a child, what do you think they do to adult black women without the insulation of money and power? I would love to hear what co-workers and interns have to say. Then she goes on to say that Melville Maddock and at Unbutton My Eyes are two full grown adults in the position of cultural influence who decide who decided that they want to start the new year by attacking a child. Later when their mealy mouth apologies come, I want you to think about this choice. Then she says, you don't have to like the parent, but this child posed in a silly picture with her mom and two adults took that as a pass to try and bully her. They work in media. They know exactly what kind of impact their words can have, and they chose to do this anyways. The baby is seven years old. Grown-ass adults are insulting her for existing, for maybe looking like her father, for looking like a young, happy black girl. Her joy is probably what offends them most, because how dare a first grader not look like their fantasies? Then, of course, here comes the damn mushmouth apology, okay? So the black guy, K. Austin Collins, he says, I'm sorry about the Blue Ivy tweet, bad joke, and black girls in particular deserve better. So I am so glad that Mickey Kendall drugged them for the filth. That is disgusting. And, you know, Blue Ivy has been going through bullshit like this from the time she was born. I've been making videos since, like, 2012 defending her from people attacking her hair, attacking her features. And to me, I just don't understand the problem. This little girl is really gorgeous, okay? She she like literally looks like Beyonce. The only difference is her nose. She does not have Beyonce's, you know, slim nose. She has Jay-Z's nose and that's okay. Like, what is the problem? Most of the people who talk the most shit about her have the same Negroid features. You know what I'm saying? Bigger noses, fuller lips. It's really sad. I never see this much controversy when Kim Kardashian posts her children. And her kids are adorable. But the self-hate is definitely evident. You know what I mean? Nobody goes in our Northwest. Nobody talks about Kim's kids. But it's always all this shade towards Blue Ivory because she's full black. And I think that's really sad that she's continually being picked on. So now, on top of that, there's also more controversy. If you guys do not know, Essence Magazine decided to basically say that Blue Ivy is a beauty inspiration because of her silky press. And the sad thing is, we've never seen Essence talk about um, Blue Ivy whenever she's had braids or had her afro out. But now that she's pressed her hair, now here comes Essence Magazine, and this is what they wrote. They said, Blue Ivy came to slay. Blue Ivy Carter's silky blowout is proof that she's becoming a beauty inspiration. So that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. 
And so here goes some of the comments. So somebody says, what does a silky blowout have to do with anything? Janae Scott Robinson replies back and she says, I agree. At Essence, I'm a fan. However, how this baby girl's hair is styled is irrelevant. This is a child. I'm confused. And then Jerome Tamel says, black, mainly women's magazine, pick this as a title. You all have no other articles about her hair texture before it was silky. This article is aligning with the European beauty standards. FYI, if you need a copyright and a social media manager, I'm available to hire, do better. And then somebody else says, ooh, anti-black content from a black publication, yikes. Blue is beautiful, period. So this entire situation is sad because like I said, once again, you know, they're either attacking her for her physical appearance, her looks, or they're praising her because she straightened her hair. And at the end of the day, people need to allow children to be children. This little girl is seven years old, not 17, okay? And, you know, them wanting to straight her hair, there's nothing wrong with that. Beyonce shouldn't be shamed for that. Um, Northwest has straightened her hair. A lot of kids have straightened their hair with, like, blowouts and stuff like that. Maybe Blue Ivy just wanted to try a different look, you know what I'm saying? It's okay to switch up your child's look, to have them have curly natural hair to a blowout. There's nothing wrong with that. But she shouldn't be praised just because her hair is straight. If you're not going to praise her when she wears braids and, you know, all types of cute little natural styles, then don't come trying to praise her now that her hair is straight and it's shoulder length and full. And, you know, I just think it's really sad that they put so much pressure on this girl. She's, she's a baby to me. You know, she's seven years old. She's still a baby. And it's just like, let her live. Let her come into herself. And I'm really glad that Beyonce and Jay-Z, they have very tough skin when it comes to their child. You'll never get a response from them. They just take the high road. They let people say what they got to say. And at the end of the day, the same people talking and trying to down this child and, you know, trying to place their insecurities on this child will never live the life that Blue Ivy is living, okay? That little girl is living her best life at seven years old. Meanwhile, you have adults talking shit and throwing shade from their damn one bedroom apartment. Like, I mean, this shit is just comical to me. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the dis so anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning the controversy around Blue Ivy's hair, concerning her looks. You have the two people, you have the two editors making fun of her. Then you have Essence trying to, you know, give her props because her hair is straightened. How do you guys feel about how people are always coming for this young girl? But yet and still, like I said, you have other celebrities who have children and they don't come for those kids and I believe they don't because those kids are biracial and they have certain features that are more palatable for certain people because they never go in on you know any of Kim Kardashian's kids they never talk mess about you know Northwest when she blows her hair out and things like that but people always come for Blue Ivy. Another example of this that happened today is that Ari Lennox was really upset she's an R&B singer and what happened is that an Instagram troll or Twitter troll, one of the two, honey, can't keep up. They basically compared her and Tiana Taylor to dogs. So this tweet went viral and she was not here for it at all. So this person wrote, his name is King Kawasi. He says, Ari Lennox and Tiana Taylor have the ability to have dangerously high sex appeal while simultaneously looking like Rottweilers will always amaze me. So then Ari replied back and she says, people hate blackness so bad. Tiana Taylor replied and she says, no lies detected. So this caused a big uproar on social media today. Plus with the whole Blue Ivy thing. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to what Ari had to say. Check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I don't, I'm not with it. I'm not fucking with that shit. Like at all. Like how people hate black people so much. How how black people can sit up here and say that's not my problem or or she she does look like a Rottweiler. That's fine. That's fine. But and and uh, and, and you want to talk about how, oh, people are so sensitive. They want us to cancel freedom of speech. Why is this your speech? Why are you so comfortable tearing down black women, women and no other race? Look around, look under, look around. When are Hispanic women ever compared to dogs? When do they do that? When do they do that to white women? When are white men doing that to white women? When are Hispanic men doing that to Hispanic women? They're not doing it. They're not. Like, and, and how come as a black woman, me sticking up for it, I'm, I'm Azealia? Like, bruh. Like, 
it's it's insane. It's insane to me that he, you're right. Like that that is real freedom of speech being threatened. That's real. That's real speech being threatened. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right. So you guys just heard what Ari had to say. So like I said, it's really sad that we're in the new year. It's 2020. And the same colorism and featureism problems are still seeping into the new year. You know, it's just really sad because like she said, when have you ever seen Latin women or any other race of women being compared to animals? It's always black women. It's always black women's features. So I'm glad that she spoke up for herself. This needs to stop. And it's sad when people get so comfortable that they think they can come for a black child that's seven years old. And like I said, these are people with, with check marks and who have power in the industry to pick, you know, people to be on magazines and to pick who they want to interview. So that lets me know if they had that much self-hatred or hatred in general for a seven-year-old child with black features, they're not going to have those same people be on the cover of their magazines, you know, interview them for their magazines and things like that, because to them, those particular features are not palatable. So it's really sad that it's like this. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that notification bell. Seek me down with the notification squad. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.